somehow I'm a glory bound God fearing son of the sound Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio. I really know our radio name. Uh, you just watched or heard Free Will in China Blue. And this is a brand new video that came out this year. Uh, and it is part of Delta Tales. Now, I do believe Delta Tales was re-released by Sun King Rising uh, with this song on it. And uh, obviously, if you've seen the video and heard the song, you know, we had to play it and we had to air this, you know. So very excited to have John Blangero back on the show, uh, not only to talk about the video and, and song, but also his brand new album. His second album is out. It's called Signs and Wonders. And you must, must go get it. So go to sunkingrising.com. Welcome back, John. How are you, Sun King? <laughs> Boy, it's great to be here. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's, it's good to see you this time. To Last talk time to we were, to all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good. And congratulations, the album is fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. We're very, we're very excited. It's it's taken off pretty fast, so we're we're enthusiastic. You know, oh, it's awesome. I you know I you are really one of the top songwriters, I believe. Like just a storyteller, musical storyteller. Um, the stories on this album, it's just like, I just want to keep re-listening to it. It's just, it should be a show. Like, <laughs> well, I tell you, we're actually, we're actually considering a, a, a very involved video that will go across a couple of songs and it, cause it really, it's got a kind of a cinematic feel to it. And, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a story behind some of those. So we're kind of linking things together. Who knows, who knows where we'll go next with the, uh, the visual side of things. Yeah, because you know, it's, it, I could see it as a play, even like a musical play kind of thing too. You well, know, we're, we're batting around a, a lot of uh, ideas these days. It's the uh, it was uh, you know after the the 
the last album, I wrote this one pretty quickly so that it's kind of really consistent. It's got a, and so I was able to tie a, a lot of the songs together. And uh, I like to do that. It's a good, you know, it's kind of a fun brain exercise. And I definitely write, you know, story songs as you alluded mm -hmm. to. So I like to, yeah, I, I, I have a definite feeling for the visual when I'm writing these things. Well, I think because you, you've got such a Southern vibe on it, you know, and the South is just full of mystery. And I know we talked about that before. You've got the swampy yeah. and then you've got, you know, the plantation sides. You've got like, you know, Alabama Nocturne to me. It was just ah. dude, like, you know, yeah. I like that. You closed off the album with that. And I'm like, no, I'm not done yet. Like, how dare you? And even <laughs> I was listening before you got on here and I'm like, what are you doing calling in? Like, I'm busy <laughs> listening to the album. <laughs> So I'm ready for another one. I'm just saying. Well, I got I've got seven songs written for the for the next one. Although Ooh. we don't intend to go into the studio for a while because we really need to to do this one justice. And now with things settled down, there's potential that we'll play some some gigs also. But awesome. uh, it's funny that you mentioned Alabama Nocturne because as soon as I wrote that. I said, this is going to be the last song in the album. I just knew that it was going to be, it was going to be the book. Perfect. And it, is it perfect. Just had that flavor and it just kind of, I thought this would be, this is a nice way to kind of, of, of end this. Yeah. Cause it kind of turns us down a little bit, like kind of slows us down, but then you're, but you're still wanting more, you know, and that's the thing, you know, cause this is just, it is a colorful album. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever described an album that way, but it's colorful because of all the stories. And where do these stories come from? I mean, are you, do you read a lot or is it from driving around? Or I know there's the science part of you too. So. <laughs> I try to keep that completely out of those. <laughs> so, yeah. but, no, it's uh, you know, just part of the, the whole, I do read a lot. I mean, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of Southern literature for sure. Yeah. You know? And, uh, uh, Actually, you know, and I read, I read quite a bit of, uh, broadly, I read a lot of history. So like, uh, uh, the song Lanterns on the Levee, oh. that, that title actually comes from a book by Walker Piercy and, and it's about the 19, the big 1927 flood of the Mississippi, uh, of the Yazoo and the Mississippi in the areas of, uh, Mississippi and Louisiana. So, you know. Randy Newman, who I'm a great fan of, wrote a song mm -hmm. called Louisiana 1927 mm -hmm. that I've always loved. I used to actually play it live. I used to do it. And I said, well, I'm going to write a song from the side, from the Mississippi side about that same thing. And so I kind of just, uh, uh, although I, you know, I, I, I take some liberties, of course, with history, but that that's what that one is about. And it just kind of fit the whole feeling of the of the album and some of the stories like sometimes they'll have a bit of uh my family history in them you know super, mm. certainly Ju the, the the name jubal blanton man tell us about that for my family you know so, oh okay because yeah. i was wondering that's one yeah. of my favorite songs on the album <laughs> that's so. where part of that color comes in too it's like ooh, what did he do <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I used I used family names and I did I used family names in the last one also. I think I had Hezekiah in the the previous That's album, right. But, but it's uh so I like to use family names and of course I let them do whatever they, you know. Uh, it, since Jubal doesn't fare too well and it's not a uh, that part of the story isn't necessarily true and uh, but uh <laughs> I, I was going to say, how does your family feel about all of this, you know? <laughs> uh, they they get a kick out of it. It's uh, you know, they they uh uh, they they you know they like they they like storytelling so oh that's cool because yeah, we were just in Asheville North Carolina uh, and we took a trolley tour and Uncle Ted is the the trolley tour the storyteller <laughs> and he's a heck of a performer and actually a bluegrass player and, and um, his band's won Grammys he's done all this cool stuff yeah. you know Asheville's and I'm like, no way. place yeah it is and it, so it, he's telling all these ghost stories we went on the ghost tour. And you're in, I mean, come on, if this is like some cool stuff and he, and he did such a good performance of this. And then he was talking about Thomas Wolfe and, you know, cause we're going to the house where it burned down and there's like ghosts in the house. And, uh -huh. and he starts talking about Thomas Wolfe, how he, you know, the books that he got really famous for, he's like, he's, he put our names in it. He just changed the town name. He told, he told our 
town gossip. And I'm like, that's the best though. You know, and I think that's what really comes through on your album is that kind of vibe of like, you're you're listening to the gossip and we like the gossip. Cool. That's uh, yeah. you know, I, I sometimes I'll write in first person, sometimes in, you know, in third. And so it's a, uh, I like to mix it up a bit, but I, I do tend to write stories. Uh, although on the next album, I'm going out of my way. It's not, every song will not be a story song. I'm trying oh. to write, you know, some things that, that maybe have a, uh, a more general feel to them. And frankly, it's kind of mercenary because I'd like to get some, some music put into, to, uh, films under sync licensing. And if you, you know, if you've made them so specific, they can only fit oh, yeah. your own story that, uh, that doesn't work so well for that maybe you have to start making movies you know that's the thing i mean the video is cool well we made you know when we made we made number six magnolia avenue which is the current single we just made a video about that and it is a it is a more of a narrative that follows the song and so that was fun so that was more of a story video and we stuck a bunch of humor in it too so it was kind of Oh, that cool, song's, cool. That song's upbeat and kind of has that kind of vibe, you know, so. And we're going to close with that. We'll play that for everyone. But everyone, wait. Uh, keep up with John. I, on it goes Sun King Rising on um, on YouTube to, you know, follow you on YouTube and uh, and, watch uh, when and the video SunKingRising.com is, of course, the main website. So anything that's happening, you can always check there and go off to anywhere else where we're, we're pointing you at the time. But it's the – and the Facebook page is also quite active, so. Signs and wonders with this with this album, you, it's out on CD and vinyl, right? Am I, did so the I vinyl's that right? not it's coming out on vinyl. The vinyl's cool. not yet ready. There's a you know there's kind of a weird slowdown of vinyl these days. There's you know there's not many manufacturers, and there was a shortage of materials, so it's kind of behind. But I've we finished the cover for it, and we have uh, you know you have to do a completely separate mix for vinyl. Oh wow! CD because of just the nature of the audio, you know. So it's a so we have our separate mix, all of that. So hopefully we'll be sending an offer manufacturing. Oh and, wow! Uh, and you already mentioned we had to do a redo. We we did a re release. Yeah, Delta Tales. Of, yeah, Delta Tales because you know as uh, probably as we mentioned talked about the last time. I you know I wrote Free Will and China Blue after we'd finished the album. So. And then we put it out as a single and it just did, I mean, did really, really well. So, so then we decided we got to put it on, we want, we want to put it on the CD. So we put it onto the CD and we re-released the album uh, on, awesome. on, uh, on CD. So that, that was done right before, you know, a few months before the new album was ready to drop. And this album, it, what was it like? Because I know the other one, you know, that that was a lot of people involved with Delta Tales. What was this album like putting it together and recording it? So it was much more. Because COVID so was used, different, right? You know? Yeah. It's uh, so we, we didn't use as many musicians. There's still a lot, but we used mm -hmm. and it's the same musicians pretty much on every song. Cool. So we had so we had a stable group this time and it really paid off. That's why I mean, it really I think the album sounds, you know, really kind of uh sonically and musically consistent it's because we have these great players and they were playing on every song so they got you know they they felt the whole thing develop you know so mm. and of course the main you know the main guys for me are you know i'm being a piano player and that part of the rhythm section the main the main guys for me is really uh, the, the other two rhythm section players and that stuff George Perilli on drums and George Elliott on bass. And I think mm. George Elliott might be the only person who played on every single song. Yeah. But uh, the sound is yeah. fantastic because I think sometimes, especially when you're doing keys as a main, you know, instrument, it can get too sharp. Like sometimes, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a, there's a thing about doing keys right. And to have that kind of sound where I don't know, it's just very vibrant. It's, it's, it's lively, but it's got like this perfect balance of sound to me. Well, that's well, I'm glad you picked that up because I decided on this album that I wanted I I wanted the piano to be a bit more prominent than on the last album. So we really worked hard on the acoustic sound. So it's the uh, and I do think it 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 blends in you know really well and uh, 
You know, I like those old Elton John albums. I love the mm-hmm. piano sound off of that. And we were trying. Yeah, to you got the vibe like that, that too. You know. Yeah, yeah, and it's also the little Billy Joel in a way. Yeah, well, the, I think yeah. that's you know the American side of it, you know, and probably the 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 kind of little bit different rock that we got on this side of the pond that we listened to and and, and were influenced by. But yeah, those are uh, uh, but both those names up pop up frequently in the in the reviews you know so yeah yeah but pretty good I, <laughs> i'm happy with that you know i know i'm like i, I wouldn't go against that you know <laughs> it's a little yeah. leon russell in there too just you know add him in there a little bit that's good you know because he's yeah. a storyteller too i mean it's just to me i i really do love the stories and it'll be interesting to hear the third one with what you're saying about okay i'm going to do some general stuff i'm like okay let's see <laughs> let's see i yeah. want to hear what you do you know because i i think it's exciting to me i as soon as I heard like, oh, you've got a new album out and I start listening, I'm like, okay, everybody stop. This is cool. You know, now we need to go on the road, you know, which will happen in a couple of weeks. We'll be listening on the road. And that's the music I want to hear, especially, I, I think you, you represent a region. You really do. And it's a big region. It's like the South, Southeast, you know, not just the South. And that's kind of, I love to have that texture where you can put stories to place and you think oh did he write it about here maybe not it doesn't really it's just that vibe and I think that's something like we were talking about southern fiction to put that in music it doesn't mean you have to have a twang (laughs) yeah yeah although I do twang when I when I sing and that's from my you know I I probably mentioned this like you know I was I was raised by a southern mama although it was in outside of Pittsburgh but my family my house was basically Southern, you know, and it was all while well, we lived in an Italian neighborhood and everybody else was making pasta. My mom was cooking Southern. So it was the and uh, bringing us up in all the usual aspects of, of you know, kind of that backbone of what the South is and that, mm-hmm. that culture. So so uh, I uh, I. I I even have a I I even have a line in one of the songs. Uh, uh, one more story to tell. There's a line. That yes. I I say I I can twang humbly when necessities arise. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I like that song too. That is because that's, that's going to be the next single actually. Yeah. Well, because you refer back to Magnolia. Yeah. Is with that too. You know, it's like oh, this is kind of like a nice little tie and see. I think yeah, you. I want to see this as a show. I'm just saying it'd be so cool to have like a theatrical production with it because, yeah, I want to see it live. I think that's what it is because it does have so much energy in the albums. Both albums have energy. And I, you know, that's hard to record without it being like recorded live and you've got that mastered. So to me, I really want to see it live. So like, most of this album was kind of recorded live. They had the most uh, musicians being in the same, you know, like old school kind of recording, you know. Buried in the Blues was definitely all, all live. But we tried to get the musicians. Certainly, you know, the rhythm section had to be uh, in the same room. And so it was, uh, uh, it's got a, it, it, I, I think it's, and of course, you know, we don't use any trickery. There's no we don't do a lot. We don't do digital manipulation, right? So, you know, my voice is my voice. There's no auto tuning going on there. And, you know, and you can tell it sounds more natural and it's fine. Sometimes, you know, it's more important to catch the, the, the dynamic of performance versus having everything be absolutely spot on, you know, kind of Mm. dull, perfect, you know, so you need the, the feel is everything. And sometimes, in modern studios feel gets lost uh, yeah i did yeah because there's just something when you have that live that energy you can't beat it you know and i think that's what was so it was interesting during the pandemic where all these you know all this music was being created it was like this creative you know lockdown but to not be able to perform live and record live i think that was a challenge for a lot of musicians yeah and I think a problem, you know, when you listen, it's kind of, it, it was an interesting period, but a lot of the music, because people were so stressed, came out kind of angsty, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, that was written during that period. But <laughs> I, I, try, I tried to deliberately avoid that. Avoid yeah, there's that. a lot I, of way. Del- Delta Tales was really <laughs> upbeat, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, this one has a bit more noir to it, but still, you know, I, 
I need people to be able to to move to it. I want people to bounce, you know. To, to yeah, move. yeah, no, but you have that's the the energy in that. That's what I think is so great. And I think your piano, your your playing has a lot of bounce. Like you can feel like it's it, it's like it, it certainly sets the the core rhythm, you know. So it's mm -hmm. kind of where do you want to play? Like if you go on a tour with this, you know, are Sorry. there certain cities or venues you want to play in? you know because because i really don't want to tour without the whole show right so that's then that's basically 11 piece so because wow. you know we have horns and backup singers mm -hmm. and whatnot so it's that's a very limiting thing in terms of where you can perform so our best bet will be you know festivals and things like that where mm -hmm. we're doing very well in europe and I'd love to see the being able to take the band to some of those European festivals because they're, I mean, practically every city in in Europe does a summer festival with music. I mean, they're and a lot of them love, you know, Americana, mm -hmm. and, you know, rootsy music and this retro vibe that we kind of have going for us, and and so that would be the ultimate thing. But you know. Well, you never know, you know, there's yeah, certain... New Orleans and I definitely New Orleans vibe in there, too, you know. Oh, yeah. Just... No, there's there's oh, and yeah. <laughs> lots, lots of places in the, you know, we, we'd be happy. It's just that in order for us to to put on the show that we'd want to put on, it takes it's a kind of a just the, the physical aspect of needing you need a, a stage, moving hotel you know, room. A yeah. Stage <laughs> that big, you know, <laughs> yeah, and exactly. the other thing is touring with that many, you know, having to, you know, it's it's a it's quite costly. So the festivals yeah. tend to be better the paying. But. Yeah, no. And, and it's so good to see festivals back and people enjoying music. Oh, people from are ready, aren't sides. they? Yeah. The communities I, are happy. Everybody's like, dude, there's music again. We can go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I just like, got back awesome. from one in, in uh, Italy, just north of Milan. Oh. And, and it was it was absolutely fantastic. You know, it's a small Ooh. one, probably two or 3,000 people, but just... What a vibe. It was fun ah. because my, you know, I'd, I'd been doing pretty well over there. So people, you know, were, were uh, we didn't play actually. I, I was there as a attendee and also doing some music business there, but people coming up and, and recognize me was a real, real fun. Oh, thing. that's cool. Who was playing? Who did you go see? So it was a, it was a prog rock festival. So it had, uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it had bands like it had Tangerine Dream and it had Gone. No. Yeah, and it had uh, some cool UK bands. Like it was one I really like called Solstice. And so anyway, it was you know it was like I don't you know th th three nice. three or four acts every evening, and it was beautiful. And of course the weather was fabulous. And it's the north of Italy, so the food's amazing. So that's awesome. So this is was, yeah. I, I think you're gonna have to go there and perform now. Like yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, the they probably thing. wouldn't want my kind of music at that particular one, but there are plenty of festivals in Europe that would, you know, so. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm excited for you. I, you know, just congrats on the album. It is Thank fantastic. You. Like oh, I was saying, the first, I was just so excited. I'm like, oh, we've got to have you back on. Yay. <laughs> you know, it's exciting. <laughs> I do want to say this, you know, we started this um, new project and I can hear your music's going to end up ending up on these uh, radio shows we do every, every fourth Thursday. There's a old highway called Jefferson Highway. It was the very first uh, international highway in this country. It goes from Winnipeg, Canada to New Orleans. Oh, wow. And it was started in 1915 by the editor of Better Homes and Gardens magazine because he knew <laughs> tourism. And it was the very first vacation highway. It, this predates Route 66, actually crosses over it and the Lincoln Highway. <laughs> and um, so there's this revival project. So we're actually starting a whole even magazine and we're just like, we're going. Since That's we travel cool. full time, we're like, hey, we got to do this. So I can see a lot of your music being part of when we're talking about, you know, Louisiana, even even like Arkansas parts of it, you know, in Texas, awesome. your music being part of that. I think you should be part of the we're going to do music shows. I think you're going to have to be part of the music shows on this. On, yeah, I'd be on happy Jefferson to be Highway. part of that. Sounds yeah. great. Sounds yeah, there's I don't know. They need a new they need a new Jefferson Highway song. So I'm just kind of putting that in your brain. I'm like, come on, you're right. the storyteller, man. Right. <laughs> I like yeah. roads in general. I just. Uh... Yeah, that's what I, I was talking to Nancy about this. I was like, oh, dude, this is the perfect person to write it because there's so much stuff that happened on this highway, all the jazz, all the music. 
all the outlaws, Bonnie and Clyde wrote, you know, all of this ah, stuff that went I down. I'll, I'll, I'll I mean, look into it. Yeah. it's dirty cool, man. I'll yeah. send you links. It's, it's like dirty cool. But I'm, you know always, I mean. I'm always looking for an angle and I'm always looking for titles, you know, so a title will often set me off. It'll it'll make me find the narrative, you know, so if I get a good. Uh, do title, you ever go through old newspapers? I do. I, you know, I keep a, I keep a book where I find a phrase, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll read a phrase. It could be like something that I've, you know, I'm, I'm currently reading. I don't specifically go through old newspapers, but I, I'll see something. I do like, you know, I used a lot of archaic words, you know, from other times in my, in my uh, song. So I'll find something. It'll just say, okay, that's a great title. Now, well, what's now, the story? You know what happened? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you ever write stories like like no. fiction? No, I, short I don't. Stories? I don't write prose. You know, mm -hmm. I have to do too much of that in my real job of being a scientist when I'm writing. Yeah. All the time. So, so no, I don't. Uh, I don't write prose. I. I, I hey, write... uh, sh <laughs> shout out to your science. You know, everybody in science. You know, the world of science. I just always got to bow down and say thank you. I know we talked about this the last time you were on the show, but. It's so important that people understand science and science is always changing because there's always new findings. So anytime anyone has anything to do with science on the show, I just have to remind people out there that some some people that need that reminding, I'm just saying, Thank I'm going to get in trouble now, right? Yeah. <laughs> get those yeah, emails. You know, I think the popularity of scientists might be at its, you know, low you know the lowest point in the past 50 years or something it's kind of people are very skeptical some some with good reason at times but you know mm. right now we're not we don't have a you know it's we're, hard we're, yeah it's there's a lot of negativity about it well what give someone one positive thing why they should read into science and not well like every biomedical breakthrough starts in a, in a laboratory right so it's so science is where we get progress medical progress and you know things mm -hmm. like we're on the verge of huge advances in things like type 1 diabetes and you know mm -hmm. things that are, you know that that's really good devastate people's lives so there's a there's a lot of good there's a lot of really good things happening out in the medical science field so do you really have to wear a white coat? Like, can we get rid of white coats and doctors? And I mean, what is that? Most most people in our labs aren't wearing white coats. You got to cover up because you're around things and whatnot. But yeah, you know, the white coat is a is a throwback. No, so you're in a look, hazmat yeah, suit. Is that your? I think it makes me? them look like barbers, myself, and I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> but, I know. you should do that when you do a next show you go out on a gig with a white coat yeah. I've, <laughs> no. I've certainly got a couple <laughs> but, yeah right well i think it's the same thing like science is interesting because it's always progression and then what you really believed at one time it can change and i think music is like that too it progresses you know we take something the roots from before and you don't want to lose that flame and i think that's the same in science you don't just abolish what was started at one point right they're always building on somebody else's hard work and that's the nature of anything that like you said moves forward so yeah I think certainly it's on the, the musical same. side you know i you know i wear my musical influences pretty you know i make them pretty pretty clear you know i'm <laughs> so uh and the same thing in science we we start from from a forward point and try to take it a little bit further mm. i have to ask you to this since you do so much musically and science do you cook this is an important question i do not <laughs> are you serious like you cook. you would you would think that would be like this other thing that cook or nope. maybe it's just too, too close nah. to it all I, no, no I, cooking. I love food and I eat out a lot. So it's uh, yeah. oh, there you go. <laughs> there it is. Hey, but very good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us again. It's a true pleasure to have you back on the show and so excited about the new album again. It is out now. Signs and Wonders go to well, it's out through Peacock Sunrise Records. We still love that name. And <laughs> uh, go to sunkingrising.com. We're going to close uh, with the song, oh, number six, Magnolia Avenue. Again, it's the newest single from the album. And stay tuned for the video. Can't wait for that because you really do a good job with the videos too. So really good stuff. A couple of weeks, that'll be out. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for listening so closely to it. I really appreciate it. Oh, you bet. It's my pleasure. Truly. <laughs> it is. I was playing the 
circuit Laying down that southern soul Late nights in the juke joints But in my heart there was a big hole I had no partner in my life What am I searching for? A rodeo queen from Abilene Smiling on the dance floor It's a strange sensation When you realize you wasted your time Got no call to Terry Lights and glamour I've got my eyes on top 